Welcome to the tutorial on writing effective thesis statements. The first question we're going to consider is, what is a thesis statement? It's a sentence or two that accurately captures the essence of the text at hand. It shouldn't contain or attempt to contain your whole argument, but someone should be able to read your thesis and have a good sense of what is to come in the rest of the text. Think of your thesis as a promise you're making to your reader about what you're up to. That's why it's so important that your thesis be accurate and straightforward, especially in academic writing. A vague or inexact thesis can be very damaging to your credibility as a writer. Most good academic thesis statements contain two essential parts. First is the claim, and second is the support for the claim, which I like to call the because clause, even though it doesn't necessarily have to contain the word because. The claim is where you take a stand and state your main point as succinctly and powerfully as possible. So if you're writing an essay explaining why you think The Empire Strikes Back is the best science fiction movie of the 20th century, your claim can be, and probably should be, as simple as The Empire Strikes Back is the best science fiction movie of the 20th century. One of the biggest mistakes that inexperienced writers often make with their thesis statements is hedging too much. That is, they don't just come out and state their position, either because they're afraid of seeming too bold, or they're afraid of not sounding academic enough, so they throw in a lot of unnecessary language that usually just ends up getting in the way of their actual argument, something like this. In the space travel-based science fiction genre, The Empire Strikes Back may possibly be one of the best movies to be made in the 20th century. As you can see, the phrase may possibly be one of replaces the word is from our first version and turns a very strong claim into hardly even a claim at all. Words like these, may, possibly, one of, are called conditionals, and they are often used to set the frame of a claim, and in cases like this one, to weaken its effect. In many instances, as we'll see shortly, conditionals are necessary, but too many of them can reduce an argument down to the point that it's not really saying anything significant at all. An even more prevalent persona amongst beginning writers, however, is the swashbuckling thesis writer. This is essentially the opposite of the hedging writer. Rather than being overly cautious, the swashbuckler makes claims that, in all likelihood, can't be adequately supported. Thesis statements written like this tend to contain lots of superlatives, best, worst, that kind of thing, and lots of absolutes, never, always, all, none, forever, everyone. This is especially dangerous in academic writing because it is difficult to prove that anything is always the case, or that there is any idea or emotion that everyone shares. So while the swashbuckling writer would claim that The Empire Strikes Back is the best movie ever made, we probably shouldn't, because there have been many, many movies made since the invention of motion pictures, and they vary widely, as do the criteria that people use to judge them. And in an academic paper, you will be held accountable for the words you use. So if you say, best movie ever, you better have a system of ranking that goes beyond mere opinion. Thus, our original claim of The Empire Strikes Back is the best science fiction movie of the 20th century will serve us well because it strikes a balance between the two extremes, the hedger and the swashbuckler. It makes a strong claim without trying to encompass the world. It sets out, it sets out a manageable and still debatable argumentative task, which should be the underlying goal of most academic texts. Next is the because clause. This is just as critical to writing an effective thesis as the claim is. This is the place where you can point to the support that you will be relying upon to make the argument for your claim. And it is also the place where you begin to define the terms of your argument. The because clause begins to answer the question of why your claim is valid. So if we put the two together, we can have a possible working thesis. The Empire Strikes Back is the best science fiction movie of the 20th century because of the combination of a traditional heroic storyline, groundbreaking special effects, and a talented ensemble cast. Note that the Because Clause is underlined here. Also note that the Because Clause clearly establishes the criteria that will be discussed and in what order they will be discussed. Also take note, not every Because Clause has to, to start or even contain the word Because. For example, we could write instead the combination of a traditional heroic storyline, groundbreaking special effects, and a talented ensemble cast makes The Empire Strikes Back the best science fiction movie of the 20th century. In this version of the thesis, we reverse the order of the clauses, which aff affects the way the sentence is read, and the emphasis that each part receives, and we've totally removed the Because, yet the relationship 
between the claim and the because clause remains the same. So, what makes a good thesis? As we've already seen, the two main characteristics of a good thesis are accuracy to your overall argument and clarity. Accuracy refers to how well your thesis reflects the actual argument of your entire text, both in terms of content, that is, do you actually make the argument for your thesis prom that your thesis promises, and in terms of narrative, that is, do you follow the path that your thesis lays out. If it helps, think of your thesis like a roadmap through your text that lays out the main points of interest. And it's the job of the body of your text to actually go on the intellectual journey that the thesis sets up. Because of our thesis, the audience we're writing to would expect our text to discuss how the storyline, special effects, and cast work together to make The Empire Strikes Back the best science fiction movie of the 20th century. Clarity, however, is a difficult thing to define in writing, because what is clear for one person may not be clear for another, and likewise, what is clear in one context, say in a highly technical filmmaking journal, may not be, may not be clear in a more general audience publication like Time Magazine even though both writings may be about the exact same information. So the main requirement for a clear thesis statement is to know or make an informed estimation about who you're writing to and what their expectation and knowledge about your topic may be. No matter what your audience and their familiarity with the subject, they will expect you to clearly define your terms of argument, the ones you establish in your thesis. In the case of our example, they will expect you to explain what logically makes one movie better than another in regards to your criteria of evaluation. This is the place where using conditional words or phrases might be necessary. For example, rather than claiming that The Empire Strikes Back is the best movie ever, we said it's the best science fiction movie. This is a condition we're putting on the thesis to make it more manageable and reasonable. Additionally, by limiting our discussion to science fiction movies made in the 20th century, we're not forced to compare The Empire Strikes Back to newer movies, where the disparity between special effects technology might make the argument less meaningful. Again, being very careful about how you define your argument in your thesis is a balancing act between not overstating your case and not understating it to the point that it carries no weight. Another, even more helpful metaphor for what an effective thesis is can be described as the governing claim, which means that every secondary claim in a paper must be governed by the big one, otherwise they are simply digressions. That is, each particular topic of discussion needs to be tied directly into the persuasive goal in your thesis. By ensuring the shared focus from point to point, as each must relate to and support the overall purpose, you help guarantee that your text will consistently stay on topic and not work against itself at any point. So, imagine that your essay is the United States, conceived of as a singular entity, indivisible and unified, which from one perspective it certainly is. However, we know that the United States is divided into subsets, the individual states, which are like the paragraphs that come together to form the totality of your essay. Taken even further, we know that each state is divided into counties, towns, and eventually individual people, as your essay could be divided further into sentences, phrases, and individual words. So what holds all these parts together and ensures that they work toward meaning rather than chaos? For the United States, it is the Constitution, and the Constitution of your essay is your thesis. It is the governing claim that dictates what is included and what is excluded in all those smaller units. So to continue with the metaphor, a state can have a law that the federal government doesn't have. All states do. Similarly, you can have sentences, paragraphs, and ideas that aren't explicitly mentioned in your thesis. However, no state can have a law that works against or contradicts federal law, because the Constitution overrules any individual state's laws, exactly as your thesis must overrule any aspect of your essay that doesn't work in accordance with it. So... As you can see here, while we might find it interesting in the abstract to compare space combat special effects from various science fiction movies, we would only want to do so in our essay if that comparison contributed in some way to our stated thesis. In other words, can we fit and use this particular discussion to support the more general goal of the essay? If we found instead that such a discussion ended up largely being tangential and unrelated to our main argument, we would have to discard it just as states are sometimes forced to do away with laws that are determined to stand in opposition to the federal law. But don't be too inflexible. If most of your ideas and paragraphs 
paragraphs seems to be at odds with your thesis, perhaps it's time to amend your thesis to better reflect the rest of your essay instead of vice versa. However you get there, the key is that your finished project reflects a harmony between your thesis and the body of your text. So now you may be thinking, how do I go about writing an effective thesis? In questions of writing, the point of putting ideas into actual use is always where the rubber meets the road. This is made particularly more complicated because no two people share exactly the same writing styles, processes, or techniques. That is, what works for one person may only throw up roadblocks for the next. And figuring out what works best for you as a writer typically just takes practice and a willingness to try different things. This sometimes mean, means you might have to start over. Nonetheless, there are a few tried and true bits of advice that will be of use to many academic writers of any experience level. First, thesis statements do not necessarily have to be single sentences, especially if you have a particularly lengthy list of points or a complex bit of logic to work through. It is usually better to break these kinds of things down into more manageable units of thought and writing than it is to go through a feat of linguistic gymnastics to make something work grammatically. Second, don't spend too much time trying to write a perfect thesis before you actually write the rest of your text. In all likelihood, your ideas and arguments will evolve as you proceed with the writing, and you won't actually be able to match your thesis to your text until you go back over both in revision. You can waste a lot of time trying to perfect a thesis that probably won't survive intact in the final draft anyway. Third, be willing to put things bluntly or inelegantly at first. Many fine and published academic essays have a thesis that begins, this essay will show that, dot dot dot. While it may not be the most poetic phrasing in the world, it does two important things. First, it unequivocally signals to readers that, here comes my thesis, and second, it creates an active structure for the writing that follows. In other words, by saying, my essay will show, the thesis turns writing into an action or a kind of communication. It makes it part of a discussion and doesn't allow it to become a passive artifact. Number four, strive for as narrow of an argument as your support can stand. By which I simply mean that specificity is almost always preferable to the more general in academic writing. This means that you should strive to use specific, exact examples and details whenever possible, which will allow you to be more specific and straightforward in your thesis. Also, if you're struggling to speak in anything more than generalities and blanket statements in your thesis, you might need to reevaluate your topic altogether. Often, an overgeneralized or superficial thesis is an indication that you don't really have anything significant to add to a topic, or that your topic is too broad to start with. And number five, rely on your research and or examples of similar texts. Look at how other writers, who are already engaged in the conversation you're attempting to enter, write their own thesis statements. Are they very formal or not so much? Where do they put their thesis? Don't be afraid to adopt techniques that other successful academic writers employ because they probably borrowed them from someone else anyway. Thank you for watching this tutorial and good luck writing your next thesis statement.